everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Darren Morris and this week I'm going to be talking about one of the major surgeries I've had dealing with cystic fibrosis. Now a lot of you may know that cystic fibrosis were in and out of the hospital maybe like a, a third of our life so we're constantly going in and out for like tune-ups or hypnosis, all kinds of stuff. So Today I'm going to kind of tell you about my little adventure. It started about roughly a year and a half ago when I first started coughing up blood. Now at first it was just a little bit and with cystic fibrosis a little bit is not really bad. It's, just, it's concerning but uh, usually what happens for people with CF is we constantly cough and sometimes when we constantly cough that the veins in our lungs can pop due to the sticky mucus uh, unclogging it that was attached. And so it's concerning, but if it goes away, then there's no need to go to the hospital. Now, my situation, I thought that was so, but it turns out I was wrong. Because when I first coughed up blood, it stopped a few days. And then it, within like a week, it comes back. And so, I'm going to the hospital, they're trying to do tests to see if it's become more of a problem because it's more constant now. And so, what they do is they do a lot of x-rays, seeing my chest, they even do what they call a, a dye study, which, for me, I have a port calf which is a little device you have either your chest or your arm. Basically, it's like an IV. It's like an internal IV that a lot of CF people get because of the constant hospitalizations that our veins become shot so we don't really take IVs real well. And also because the medications we take through IVs are so strong that it becomes a burning sensation. So it's better to get a port cath or a PIC line to take in those medicines without actually harming us. Now back to my story is that with all the testing and stuff, no one could figure it out. The doctors didn't have any explanation. So October comes around, and this was my third hospitalization from the homothesis. And this time it's really bad, where I'm coughing up like more than two cups worth of blood. There's clots in it that's coming from my lungs. And so. So what they do is a little minor surgery called bronchial artery embolization, which is basically when you're when you're in surgery, the doctors will go in, have a little catheter, and put it in your leg, which the artery that they put it in goes straight up to your lungs for the bloodstream. And what they do is when the catheter is in, they shoot in this dye. And they track the dye for the blood flow through a monitor to see where it's leaking, where the vein is popped and it's constantly putting blood into your lungs. So once they figure it out where it's bleeding from, then they go in and they can clamp it where the vein is pinched so it can't bleed through all my lungs. Now that's surgery one. And it helped stop the bleeding for about a week. I go home, two days later, I'm coughing up more blood, which is another real concerning, considering that they thought they stopped it. So I'm back in the hospital. Another two weeks go by monitoring my blood, and I start coughing up a lot of blood again. This time it's more. So they go in for another one. A different area towards my upper right lung to where another vein is bleeding so they go and they pinch that now it stops it for a little bit a little bit longer so I get to go home the full another two weeks it's November and I head to a long road trip to Houston I feel fine I feel great I don't feel sick anymore and I go and I stay with my family Guess what? The next day, early in the morning, I start coughing up blood again. And it's a lot more. And so, 
my little vacation with my family was now a trip back to the hospital, which it was a four hour drive because people with cystic fibrosis have to stay within the medical team that they're at. So say now I'm in Houston and my hospital is in Austin, I had to drive all the way down there again in order for me to see them. I can't go to a hospital in Houston. I can't go to a different medical team because they don't have uh, the care that I need. So I'm driving all the way back to the hospital where I'm admitted again in another two weeks. But in this case, they decide to do a CT scan, which I'll put a picture in to kind of show you for people who don't know what a CT scan is. It scans basically your whole body the lungs, veins, organs, to kind of give you a better picture of it. When I'm done with the CT scan, a couple days go by and they finally get the results. And it turns out that the doctors finally figured out what is causing my blood. It's called a fungal ball, which I won't try to pronounce the name, but I can put it in the, in the video below right here. So it's a type of fungal that you can get by just the atmosphere, uh, the water, and it's not rare, but it's not common either for people who have cystic fibrosis. It's a lot less common than pseudomonas or staph. Now what it was was a mass, like a small piece of pie, and what they had to do was I had to go back into surgery to try to see if they can remove it. Now this surgery was a lot more dangerous, I would say, because it had to be completely sedated, which could also have a lot of trouble with people with CF because we already can't breathe real well and with sedation, if something goes wrong, like have an asthma attack or, you know, if blood sugars, if you have diabetes drop, it could be a really dangerous situation because you won't be able to tell while you're being under. So doctors will try to avoid it if necessary. But in my case, I really didn't have a choice. So when I'm under, the doctors had to examine my lung to see if they can easily remove it. And depending on where it is, they would have to see, see how much they can take out without harming me. Unfortunately, with a fungal ball that's attached to your inside your lungs, they have to take a part of your lung with you. Now, depending on how affected it was in the lungs or how much it damaged the lungs will depend on how much you'd have to take out. But it was located in my upper right lobe of my lung. Lucky for me, they didn't have to take out my whole right upper lobe where they thought it was supposed to be. They only had to take out a piece, which is about about the same as a fungal ball, about a little bit of a pie size piece. So I'm lucky for that. And from time to time, I still, it still hurts. I can still feel the missing part, which sometimes is difficult for me to breathe. But my body did adapt to it very well. It took a long time before I got to go home. I'd say I spent my full time trying to figure out what was causing me to cough up a lot of blood and all these surgeries. I'd say I pretty much stayed full three months in the hospital, which I missed Halloween, Thanksgiving, and almost Christmas because I got out on the 22nd. So I was thankful I got to spend Christmas with them. And so the result, I'm feeling a lot better. I don't cough up a lot of blood. I cough up here and there, normal. But lucky for me, I didn't get to have any surgeries. It's not life-threatening anymore. We just have to keep it subsided so the fungal bacteria doesn't spread. And what I do for that is take some antifungal medications, which hopefully will result in it slowly going away. Because with fungal, unlike pseudomonas or staph or the, you know, the common uh, bacteria that we can get, fungal takes a long time to go away. It's one of those slowly growing, slowly fading away kind of bacteria. 
And so the today marks my one year of actually taking the medications and it is slowly going away. So I'm excited to hear what the results will do in December to see if I can stop taking the fungal medication. Because what the fungal medication does while taking it is I can't take certain other medications that I do daily because it interacts with it. And so I'm constantly uh, battling with my diabetes because of the pill. I'm constantly battling some of my treatments that I can't take, some medicines that I can't take. And so I'm not always 100% uh, healthy or filling up to certain things because I'm not getting all my medicines that I'm usually doing. So in December, whenever I get my next appointment, I really hope the results become negative again and then I can start back on my regular routine. So I hope that this was entertaining. I hope this was educational and a little offside from my regular routine of telling you what about cystic fibrosis and more into like a personal story to help with other people who are having a similar a similar story with the blood incident. I'm not sure. Uh, just leave questions, comments below. I'll be happy to answer them in the next video. So I hope this video was entertaining as much as educational for those who are also having the, a blood issue with cystic fibrosis or people who are dealing with people who are going through similar situations. Hopefully not with all the surgeries that I had to go through, but not that you're not alone in your journey with cystic fibrosis and or people who have it. To hear back from you, please like and subscribe, add your comments, questions, encouraging words for people who have this disease. Hope you like and subscribe. It helps spread the awareness of cystic fibrosis throughout the internet. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.